Thank you, Maka. Let's just now begin. I'm going to start sharing my screen. And thank you once again, everybody, for coming another webinar, another week. And after our, our great presentation, uh, yes, our topic today will be locations, right? The idea of the following webinars for this uh, end of the month will be exactly that, manage your inventory in your company. But to begin, we need to just uh, confirm because uh, how we are going to create that uh, network of warehouses, right? In first place, uh, we have sometimes in uh, companies in large geographical areas, uh, units being managed independently, uh, of course. And then uh, such a, an approach to our organizing their business helps companies gain a competitive, and competitive advantage through the achieving operational flexibility and customer uh, responsiveness, right? Correspondingly, companies with multiple locations face the challenge of retaining control over their decentralized operations and optimizing inventory flows. Uh, here in uh, Microsoft Dynamics uh, Business Central, uh, we provide a selection of multiple locations and use uh, uh, what we call responsibility centers functions, which help companies that have multiple sites manage their business operation in the most flexible yet optimal way. So we're gonna uh, begin with the most uh, with the a creation of a warehouse, which is our new location. If you buy, store, or sell items at more than one place or warehouse, you need to set up each location with a location card. So uh, I'm going to now access to Business Central, which I'm sharing, and here in Business Central, I'm going to look for the locations. Right? Let me move this a little, and then. In the location side, I, I'm going to look for the locations list, which is uh, the different warehouses that I have enabled in this company at least, right? The location card contains the general information. Let me just open, such as name and address, but it also contains fields to enable warehouse tasks and beams, right? So to set up a new location, uh, we're just going to need to they just input the information and we are going to just click on this plus the icon where I'm just going to be able to set up a new blank location card. So the idea first is that we are going to add one code. As an example, we are going to add uh, a warehouse or the store one, which in the end, the, our warehouse, uh, our stores are warehouses as well. So we can just define here so uh, we're gonna just put some inventory in this in this in this uh, location, right? So this is the store one, store one, or uh, this could be uh, another name, right? Even the name of the store actually. And then we are going to add then some other information important for me. Uh, first, the address. So I'm going to add now just the these fields where I'm going to just need. The zip code. The zip code is going to help me to then, for instance, a, a, this information will be then placed in our documents when we add it, right? So first, a, we are going to need just one code, okay? The store one is your code. Your name, it's up to you how you want to actually call it. And we're just going to need the address and the contact. So this will be Noe because this person or this a, a contact will receive information or with this information can be used for the printed documents, right? So let me just um, input my information, right? I'm just going to add my email. Um, excuse me, this is here, right? And I'm well out. Very good. So this is the first thing that we are going to be uh, uh, doing. Now, the second setup, just to mention, is this one. Use as in transit, OK? Uh, this field is used to specify if a location is used to transfer items between two locations. Transfer orders are covered um, in, the, in another module that we are going to review. But so to speak, a uh, while we are uh, moving items from one place to another, we are going to temporarily have the, the items in transit, right? And we want a virtual warehouse, so to speak, or if we even could create a truck, this could be used to move the items, which would be for us a warehouse that is used as in transit, in other words. So 
This is then important for us because we are going to need to define where are going to be connected our warehouses in terms of a, a, a network, so to speak. Right now, after every time we just set up, set this up, okay, what we're going to look for, oh, by the way, we can show a map any, any address, right? But this is just informational as well. Now, um, if, if you want now, the idea of using this uh, warehouse is that after I have set it up, I need to ask my account and please give me a GL account, please, because I'm going to now um, configure the actual a uh, value right or whenever we receive so to speak let's say an item uh, in in this warehouse we're gonna register the quantities of the items we receive but in the end let me just configure this the inventory posting setup is an, a place where i'm just going to add a, an actual a warehouse and i'm going to link it with our inventory account just so just so you can go here and check in which accounts you are posting your items, the value of your items. So in one place, in the actual location, we save, so to speak, the quantities, the unit of measure, the barcodes, information related to inventory, but in any given ERP, in this case, Business Central, we are connecting the warehouse module with the finance process because all the items that we have in this warehouse have a value, right? And we need to know how much money we have in that warehouse. In order to do so, well, accountants may understand this, but in this case, we are gonna need to save the value of those items in one GL account, right? Uh, here, uh, I have an inventory account, which is an asset account, the way we call them, okay? And this inventory account is gonna have, is gonna uh, record all my transactions that I post to this warehouse and we're going to need that otherwise we are not going to be able to to work properly right now now that we are talking about inventory management i would like to take you through some decisions that might be very important to, to you in terms of how you manage your inventory in your own a company in order to do so now i'm going to go to the center of business central regarding inventory and I'm going to look for the inventory setup. Okay, here is where I configure my modules, how they will be working in the system. Let me explain you. Uh, first of all, in the inventory setup, what I'm going to or what I'm planning to do is input a location mandatory. You know what is a location now, but now in Business Central as well, you can make it mandatory to a to the users. So they will be then inputting any warehouse, any given warehouse where, where they work in the actual documents. Believe it or not, and because Business Central is as well a financial uh, ERP, uh, we can input information directly to GL without having a connection without, uh, with the warehouse. We do not all, or, or not all the type of transactions will be actually related to inventory, right? Some other expenses and other type of things, invoices that we can create. But we are going to need a location mandatory whenever we purchase or sell items, okay? So we then get our reports and our physical inventory is correct. Now, some of you might say, okay, listen, Noe, I don't want to have negative inventory in this location, especially. It's not a problem. You can actually check, check mark this, this box, okay? Now, let me explain a little bit about these implications because uh, some of you might need to sell, right? Uh, um, as a priority. And if you let this, right, a, with preventing a negative inventory, you are not going to be able to sell those items. In other words, especially in the retail industry, we recommend that this prevent, preventive negative inventory is just a, a not check marked. Let me explain. Um, even though for some of you or some companies, this is a problem, the negative inventory, we have in Business Central, and I strongly recommend to follow this advice for those of you who have that scenario. We have some a, a, a reports in Business Central that we can provide to our accountants, and that applies as well for NAB, right? That where they can, before the end of the month, verify all the negative inventory on their financial side, which values, which items are giving me a negative profit. Please, a, we can provide this report to the, your financial 
a, account, a controller and it's going to give you that for those of you in retail because especially you're, you're going to find an item once in a while in the store that you haven't yet uh, counted properly or something had happened there and uh, uh, an adjustment that was not posted but anyway you need to sell okay that's mandatory for wholesaler well it's up to you okay in this case prevent negative inventory is check mark because i want to have a, a relative tight control right to my warehouse at least not having a negative issues here but as well we recommend you to do physical counts right on a on a periodic basis to detect those items that are negative already okay so this is just a good a tip that we manage i'm going to show you on the in the end those type of controls but for now let's continue with the basics okay i have made in my um I, I, I have made a, a, my, my location right mandatory. A, if locations, once again, are not mandatory, a location code is required when you post item transactions, which means that you can post items to a blank location and the business center will manage inventory for a blank location, okay? This approach could result in unexpected behavior, such as when you calculate a plan a, 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 in business central, right, for inventory. Okay, let me explain this part. If I actually want to do a physical can or I review some items, they might have inventory transactions that have no warehouse, okay? And this is how then we imagine if with just one warehouse, you, you want to control your, your inventory, imagine now that you have more than that, right? So just to mention that, the, once why i have made my my location a uh, mandatory first okay i might have them specified locations let me just try to find some of them if they exist in my company without tracing of our location how do we do that i'm going to look at my coca-cola this is my item catalog i'm just going to click on one of them I'm just verifying that, but I need to show you this report. Now that we are talking about location, and first of all, you're gonna have a quantity on hand of any given item. In this case, I have these quantities, right? But it's important for me now that I will be creating more warehouses to know where they are located. So I have one report that is called availability, where I can look at the availability by location, for example, all right? So you can print it and verify how many items you have in each place because the idea in the end is that you're going to as well transfer items if you don't have one look at this unspecified location luckily for us today uh, even though i am opening the availability by location and i want to see if i have items all of them in a specific warehouse now that i have changed the rule to have a location mandatory and luckily for us even though I have a line that is only for a specified location, currently the quantities in that locations are zero, okay? So we are gonna need, whenever we create a new warehouse or we want to expand, right, that our inventory is, is managed in the proper place. So here, please verify those items that you know that you were receiving if you create this new rule and you, you, you don't have this type of um, specified locations. Otherwise, what I recommend to do if you have that, right, is just use what we call the item journal. In the item journal is the first place where we are going to be doing adjustments for items. Let me explain to you. An item journal where I'm going to just maximize in this moment, I'm going to just input then the uh, look by description, for instance, I have two Coca-Colas, right? If you are unsure about the location where, please leave it blank if the location was incorrect, and then just make an adjustment on the location, right? In this case, let's say I'm going to leave it with minus one with the location code blank. So you can then get rid of those transactions that are actually on an unspecified location. And what the item journal does is basically mine is going to increase or decrease the quantity by doing a positive or negative adjustment. You decide, it's up to you. In this case, we are trying to move my items to the actual location where they should be located. Now, 
I'm going to make an adjustment and it will be important to mention that we have multiple units of measures. Remember that? Okay, we saw this in a previous webinars where you could create, create items with different units of measures. And this will be important in this case because if I make an adjustment for one pallet, well, how many units I will be diminishing, okay? And this could be the case. If I just select the pallet unit of measure, then 50 Coca-Colas will be then adjusted just by changing the unit of measure, all right? So only for those of you who might uh, look items that are in an incorrect place, in this case, a location code where they shouldn't be, make a negative adjustments because those quantities are not correct, okay? With the item journal, you can post these quantities to the location in which the items are located. When quantities are no longer on the on specified location, you, you can make the location mandatory once again. Just as a, as a general best practice that I re always recommend, okay? Very good. <laughs> so you can now <clears throat> verify your, your items, check your inventory, make, make rid of the errors that you might have because we don't want to actually go with those, okay? And now I'm going to look a, for my locations and decide if I'm going to need one special a warehouse that will be present, that will be my central warehouse, so to speak. By the way, I have one that is called the main warehouse, okay? So simple as. So once I have this, <clears throat> the idea is that I want to have one main warehouse. I don't want to just make a, a in every document, uh, I can make Business Central to help me inputting the main warehouse or why not related to the employee. Maybe that's a good example because everybody works in different warehouses, right? So let's just start setting that up and once, because we are going to have multiple locations. And let me just give you an example. A, when I just go to my company, uh, a new, new company, or maybe if you try it, when you open a... a a purchase invoice and you create for the first time, it doesn't contain a location, all right? Now with the rule that we have set up, okay, we are gonna be forced to in input a location code or, the, or a warehouse. But what can the can Business Central do for me to input that by default, okay? Let's just check the company information card. So if a company has a head office, in this case, or a main warehouse in which most of the items are purchased, produced, assembled, then a, and are maybe or transferred, right, to other warehouses to operate as a distribution center from which sales orders are shipped to the customers. The company follows the centralized distribution policy. You follow me here? Then uh, we need to set that up, okay? So we have access to company information and we are going to expand the shipping tab. Here in the shipping tab in the location code field, uh, we are going to select the decentralized warehouse. Uh, uh, here is close to the company information. Let's, let's look at it. And from here, we can input, well, the main warehouse that we are gonna use. The preceding, uh, uh, well, this, this uh, uh, will be now my, my main centralized warehouse, meaning that Business Central will use the main location and purchase orders for which no locations are set up on their vendor card or responsibility center. Right, so let me just then just uh, verify. I have now a main location, and this is, by the way, the, the address and all the information of my company, not of my warehouse. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay, in the company information, where look at my logo, look at my company name, etc. I will have one main warehouse for now. That's it. And then the idea is that whenever I create, for instance, let me just take a look at vendor because I want to purchase now for my centralized warehouse, right? So the idea is that then uh, here Business Central is going to help us, right? Now, every vendor as well, just to mention, have the same field that we call the location code. So what would this mean? Apart from my main warehouse that, I would, that I'm setting up for, for me, well, maybe some other vendors, if I have multiple warehouse, they deliver in other in locations, okay? And I'm going to set up that in a moment. So this, we have the main warehouse already, but for this vendor, I'm going to set up another warehouse, which will be the new warehouse, okay? This vendor, for any given reason, 
they will be doing drop shipments directly to the store. They don't send the items to my main warehouse. That sometimes happens for some specific type of vendors, right? That will be delivering to specific areas or a location in this case. And even, right, we are going to be able to add, okay, if you go to the store one, you can take maybe one or two days or even one week to deliver. It's up to you, okay? But you can establish the lead time. In the lowest part, I have just configured this, this, this information. Let me just show you. Okay, so here the lead time is two weeks. This could be a, as well two days and so forth, all right? So in this case, the idea is that I have configured that uh, this vendor fabrica, this is my vendor card, right? It's going to then give me the items or deliver in this specific location that is different from my main warehouse, but only for this vendor. So what happened when I actually create a new purchase order? So I'm going to just actually create a new document. And for the first time, when I create the new uh, document, let me just add the actual vendor that is called Fabrica and look at the location code where this vendor is going to deliver, okay? Very good. So if I just input this information, right? The idea is that this order, when I actually create it, right? Is going to actually, this vendor is going to ship directly to the store of one. So you can now start inputting items. So this is then quite helpful, right? To configure this to the, uh, to the company and to the vendor. So you can then uh, default, it, default it for you. So I could then add just items and they will be then uh, inputted in the store number one in this example, all right? So I'm just going to receive in this case, why not 10 pallets for the first time, okay? With the new brand location that we have selected, I have purchased 10 pallets. And from here, I can just immediately go. Ah, and by the way, this is asking me to approve, okay? So I'm just going to now request an approval. You can then do so for your purchase orders. When you have this, oh, this, look at this, this is as well pending prepayment. I don't want it for now. Let me just uh, cancel my approval and then reopen my order. By the way, we have just some prepayments that could be enabled for some of you, okay? Which is in this example, 10%. I don't want it for now. I just wanted to show you that we are going to be just receiving in the store number one or the recent a warehouse where we have created this, okay? Now, let me just send it because I'm the administrator, I'm going to approve immediately my a purchase order, okay, a behind the scene, and my status is released, okay? When they purchase a, is already released, it means that the warehouse is going to be able to see now this requirement of receiving these 10 pallets of Coca-Cola, and we can decide as well the date. Look at this. This is important as well, right? This can be managed through the reports. Because of the lead time we have configured, we expect to receive at any given moment automatically well, we, you're going to get the calculations of your expected receipt dates, okay? Simple as. But now, regarding inventory, you're going to be able to receive the items. So, but, uh, let me check. I have been doing a lot of different demos, so let me correct one of them for now. And I have a, a, a date um, block. So this is because as well, you can actually a configure, configure your company to be able to post only on specific periods of time, which is very, very handy, okay? So let me do it until August just for follow demonstration. So far, so good. Now, 
uh, the idea then is that the, the warehouse clerk is just going to receive the, the items, okay? They are not going to see information in, in uh, user setup. This is related then to my user, excuse me. Yeah. Okay. The idea is that the warehouse clerk is not going to see information about the cost or taxes or anything like that, right? Uh, regarding what we are doing here is that we are going to then be receiving items, right? And if I take a look at the reception, which is connected to the purchase, then I'm going to be able to see then where I have received in the store number one and the warehouse clerk only see information related to inventory, okay? They only want to see the quantity, the unit of measure, when they're gonna need to receive, et cetera, et cetera. And this will be a Coca-Cola, okay? Nothing else is then here for the warehouse clerk. In the purchase receipt, they just see information related to the inventory. Okay, so this is the, 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 the process for this fabric camp, a, a vendor, okay, that has actually a received by configuration or one specific location. Now, if we have a configure, I'm going to create a new purchase order. I have other vendors that they do not have any warehouse configure, like a first stop consultants. The location is just completely blank. So if I just click OK, and then I just, for instance, say verify the order. I'm going to get immediately the location code for this purchase order when I'm creating the document for the main warehouse because you have configured in this, in this demo then the company information main warehouse. So this is why even though this vendor doesn't actually have one specific warehouse to, to then send the, the items, immediately it receives the company main warehouse. That's why we have configured that, okay? So it's up to you whether you want to configure your, your items, a, a, your, your company to, to have a main warehouse, right? Or a, by vendor or as well, let me explain you that that helps as well with the customers. If I just open a customer, let me show you. The customers are here. They as well have the location. They as well have the location from where we are going to be in this case shipping, okay? So I have the Adatum Corporation, which is one of my demo customers. Look at the picture and the contact is uh, Robert Towns, okay? So the idea is that in this case, for this specific customer, if I create a brand new sales order, they are going to be sending a, a, my sales orders from the main warehouse, okay? Because this was configured as the main warehouse of the company. That's fine. I can just configure it. And every time I create a, a new brand, a brand new sales order is going to get the main warehouse of the company. But if you don't want to ship to this customer from the main warehouse, you just open the customer card like the vendor and in the location code, input the warehouse from where you're going to be shipping to this customer. Okay. Nevertheless, just to mention it as well, uh, regarding your managing uh, managing inventory in different locations, uh, some of your customers uh, sometimes call you and tell you, uh, okay, if you're going to ship me, I'm going to have three or four different addresses from where you're going to need, um, uh, where I'm going to request the items to be delivered, okay, basically. Then uh, in order to do so, we are going to create more than one single a address correct for any given customer so uh, if i want to do that let me just look for the field please go and find in the navigate section the ship to address menu this is then the actual um, directory where i can find all the different addresses that i can create and guess what i have three different addresses and each one could be actually configured to then uh, be linked to one different location in my company. Let me give you an example. This client is calling me in this very moment and tell me, hey, I want then 
I have a, in my main warehouse that is located in Atlanta, right? But this is located as well in another address. I'm going to then add the warehouse number two of this customer, okay? The name for a Datum Corporation. And they are located in another street, another number, Market Square. And then I'm going to add Hilton Street, okay? That's the idea. What happened with this new address? The customer is going to tell me, hey, I have an other address. I, ha I have previously three. I want a fourth new address. And sometimes I will be actually uh, requesting items from another location that is in, in the north, in the south, whatever, right? What will be the location from where you can ship me faster, okay? It's not a problem. Let's just verify. And I would then add for this address, I'm going to then send you items from the main address, okay? For the main warehouse, or let's say as well from the store one, okay? That would be the idea. Every new address, you can create them, and as well, your customer can decide what, which, which warehouse is nearer, uh, the nearest to this actual address, so you can ship from here directly. The same for vendors, the same for customers in this, in this type of examples, right? So let's just add it. So I have one, a loose rod, this will be then shipped from the East Warehouse. If they want the warehouse number two, I'm going to then ship from another location. And let's just check Park Road. And they, this customer, I'm going to then, while well, I'm just verifying my information in my map, I'm going to look at this. This is why we use a map. I have the show on map information. Oh, I haven't set it up, sorry. Um, sorry for this. Then uh, when we just check the, the information as well, you can check it on the map or whatever. And so you can see which warehouse is nearer, nearer your actual address. And that will be then just it, all right? So you manage different type of warehouses in different uh, for different circumstances, right? But the idea is to make the supply chain the shortest. The shortest you can do it will be even better. So that's the concept of the multiple locations. And I'm just going to add, some of you might be requesting, okay, this is easy. I can configure it very fast so my users work faster. Now, I'm only just going to open the transfer routes because later you're going to as well, not only receive and sell like I'm just showing, but as well transfer among different warehouses. Just please verify the following information where this might be helpful, okay? Uh, the transfer out are, are just, uh, you establish, okay, from this location to other, I'm going to be then moving items. For instance, I have created a new store. The, the, the new warehouse that I have created is currently not yet connected to transfer items among other warehouses. So what I'm going to do is just open this matrix that is called the transfer routes. And I'm going to look to the store one. I'm going to link it to the main warehouse. So the main warehouse is located in this column. And I'm going to the four row, which is the store number one, two for the first time at, okay. Among the store one and the main warehouse, I'm going to need an in-transit location. I have to outsource logistics or own logistics if you have your own transportation process, okay? So, or, or trucks or what else you could use, right? So the idea is that you know, let me just give you an example of a transfer order that I'm going to send in this case, I'm going to use an outsourced logistic uh, provider and we can connect, for instance, DHL, FedEx, UPS, right? in business central, so we manage your packages, all right? Of, of course, this is a, a service that we added, but if you have it, I'm mentioning it because it's uh, um, in previous uh, softwares, right, uh, ERPs, I mean, it, this was not fully all the time integrated. Now it's very easy to do so, okay? So if you want to integrate this, I strongly recommend you, please call me and I can give you a special webinar, how then, okay, I want the DHL, 
a provider and I want an overnight delivery, standard delivery, and all the services that DHL provides me so I can get my label directly in Business Central to make a package. That's super, super handy, especially when you, you know, online sales now are, are, are taking, okay, this is changing our inventory flow, right? Okay, but that's for another type of conversation. For now, I wanted to, to mention, okay, from the store one to the main warehouse, look at this title. Among these two warehouses, how am, I, how am I going to move my items? I'm going to use DHL. That's fine. Okay, another example. Among the, um, the store one and what else? And the WMS warehouse, what I'm going to do is use another in-transit code. You create your in-transit codes only for you. But in this case, I'm going to use my own logistics, okay? My own trucks. And then in this case, I'm not going to use the shipping agent code or a shipping agent, okay? And that's not going to be a problem. So what I'm saying is that from the store number one, if I want to ship or a items to the WMS warehouse, I need to use my own logistics. You get me here? So that will be the idea of the transfer routes because in between, while we have our items in transit, I would like to know as well how they will be sent because we might run into a different, whole new different process. What I'm doing here is just managing my basics in Business Central, right? And I have established a route so I can transfer. Let me just take a look now at the Coca-Cola, okay? The, 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 the item, okay? So if I just open this, you can, by the way, filter now in Business Central with the description, right? And you can see all the different operations all the different items used by looking for that. And here I'm going to look for the actual availability. Okay, from here I have my locations once again, right? The idea is that now I have 500 units, okay? This is very important for you now that you are managing a, your inventory in multiple locations. What I see here is that I have purchased 50 pallets, right? Only 50 pallets, but now this is telling me, hey, you have 500 units, okay? One thing that I must tell you within Business Central, we manage one type of, a, so to speak, a main base unit of measure, all right? Which is, let's just give me, let me just give you some insights. Here I have the base unit of measure, which is the piece which is the actual bottle. I should have changed it to, to bottle instead, but the demo came with the pieces, okay? This is an actual bottle, right? And when I take a look at the unit of measures as well, it's important to mention, well, Business Central does the calculations, okay? So I purchase a few pallets, but every pallet has 50 bottles inside. That's what you're going to see in your inventory management uh, reports or inventory processes as well, okay? Except that in the documents, purchase, adjustments, physical counts, etc., you're going to be able to select any given unit of measure. That's super important. And for those of you who manage retail stores, you have other processes for inventory management that are more precisely for the store where you can change the unit of measures, where you can print different labels related to inventory management in the store, not explained here, right? But in the near, in the following moment, I will be focusing more on the LS retail side. All right, for now, this is just the basic type of calculation, but upon this, everything is as well working, okay? So I have then calculated everything based on, on my base unit of measure. Once that is just created, what I want to talk about is, okay, no, that's fine, but as well, in, in my inventory, I do not only manage different type of locations, and I, I do a transfer orders, and as well, I manage my, I, my, my a company by different, so to speak, regions, all right? So we might need as well to create a responsibility center, right? 
In order to do so, what I'm going to look is just here, the responsibility, responsibility centers, okay? This is what, when we actually, uh, uh, if the business is expanding, okay, we are gonna need a new warehouse, so to speak. By the way, my company is in the USA, my demo company. I'm currently, I'm working in the South, in Atlanta, Miami, this, so to speak, uh, the demo environment, right? Where I'm just putting items, uh, transferring, et cetera, et cetera. But for now, let's say that I want to have a division among my company in the, the US, in Detroit, okay? And so I'm gonna have then a new specific a region where I want to report or make a, a new type of warehouse. But in this case, what I'm going to do is uh, establish a new responsibility center in the north of the USA, because I'm remember I'm working in the south, okay? And I will be located in, uh, let me just grab an address, in Detroit, okay? So after creating a, the, the responsibility center and we're gonna need to add the region, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The zip code and so forth, okay? We're gonna need to set up a task, okay? To input the location code, okay? So the location code is as well in the responsibility center that is will be managed a new management only for the North with their own resources, even with the, with the new director, and they will be having one specific location that I need to create for the North, okay? So if I just click on new, once again, it's very, very important to create this warehouse. This will be North, this will be located on Detroit. This is my new brand warehouse, okay? And well, here, I'm just going to add this location card to my responsibility center, okay? So th these are the steps. So this is the North Warehouse. I have the address, I'm gonna need the, the contact as well. Very good, okay? And once you, you have this uh, basic information, the, the idea is that uh, they are gonna, we are gonna have different supply chain in this new geographical area that we call responsibility center, okay? And I'm going to have a completely brand new vendors and, and items in this, in this new responsibility center. This helps us to make them another rearrangement and reports, financial sales by responsibility center. It's like a new whole level above the actual physical location that helped me manage in an easier way my information, okay? So in order to, to then complete my, my information, uh, I'm going to need to add a new customer or vendor to this region, okay? It's fine if I transfer from my main warehouse to the, to the north of warehouse the information, is not a problem. But let's say that one of my customers, right, is currently a, in, an, in, in this new area, correct? The idea is that uh, we are going to be working now not only with the location code, but we are going to be uh, working with my responsibility center, okay? So what I'm doing is locate, locating a, a, a vendor, right? And in this case, I will be just checking my location code once again and put it in the new north warehouse that is located in north okay for that we are going to need to add a other gl accounts right for the north so so i manage my inventory in different in different a uh, places or if you want yes we can a uh, input the same inventory account is not a problem but with this configuration that we call the the responsibility center the idea is that business center helps me to create more reports, so to speak, a, that are linked because this customer is part of the North Responsibility Center, right? With this simple setup, we will be in a new position to create more reports now for sales, for a PNL, why not, or for the operations in the North Responsibility 
center only by selecting north in my different reports i'm just going to be able to look at this information and this will be faster okay so i can get all my customers all my vendors all my inventory by responsibility center this is one of the uses of the responsibility center all right so for instance if i actually want to look at the inventory valuation well maybe not the valuation this will be uh uh, the value of the of how how much money the items you have in any given warehouse okay the value is going to provide this so so you can set it up and, and select any warehouse well now that i have opened the inventory evaluation okay you can select in which warehouse you want to see the value and for us checking the inventory all the items my my cost one specific a, a might have different costs in different regions okay let me explain you if i was just speaking about transferring for instance or purchasing another warehouses that i have created maybe when i work in the south it's cheaper that if i just need to transfer items to the north in this example now the items will be costing more because i need to then a uh, pay for a freight insurance to move the items from my main warehouse to the other all right business central calculates as well that for you and we calculate then uh, we will get then different values of the same item in different regions and as well in different warehouses okay that would be then the, the, the general process of how to then create a different a locations, right? Different a processes that I'm going to need to complete to get defaulted information in my main documents and the concept of allocation. Let me just give you another idea of what could be allocation because I'm going to move now doing a transfer process, okay? For now, I'm going to create a new location that will be my truck number one. Yes, this is a virtual warehouse because yes, I have this truck and I do transfer orders to use my trucks from one warehouse to the other, okay? So what's gonna happen here regarding the inventory is that I'm going to click now as a use as in transit type of warehouse. This will be virtual, okay? This doesn't require an address, maybe a phone number so you can contact the driver and the name as well, okay? We normally as well work with this type of configurations, especially if you are a going out, not only for a supermarket, but maintenance, you provide maintenance to, to your customers, right? After a sale, you send technicians, things like that, okay? And in order to work like this, I'm just going to add now my, remember, inventory posting. We are gonna need a, one gl account for all my uh, warehouses that, that that i set up so in this case the truck one needs one gl account once again and you can create one gl account for your actual uh, items that are in transit that i always as well recommend if you want to be really really uh, under uh, the, well putting your inventory under the microscope here i'm going to be using only one inventory account but i can separate it as well don't forget it. even each warehouse could get one different gl account that's not a problem for us then once again the routes Let me just click on the transfer house and I'm just going to verify that my aim worries. I don't see the truck, the truck, 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 truck. Maybe I'm gonna to need to close this one first. Yeah. I'm going to link my truck to the route where this truck actually uh, will be working, okay? So, so fine, so good. I'm going to need from my store number one to the main warehouse, I'm going to change to outsource logistic to use the truck one, okay? So in this example that I have created a location that is in transit, when you create your routes, you're going to have this new a warehouse or virtual warehouse that is simulating a truck. Well, I'm going to then when I transfer items, take the items from one warehouse, put them in the truck for a moment and then receive in another warehouse, okay? 
So just to finish this session for today, the in transit uh, is as well part of our process. And I'm going to do now a transfer order for you to see it for the first time. The transfer order is, is a, a document that we use to move items from one location to the other. It's very easy. Now I have a difference. Uh, well, we have different type of configurations, but for now, what I'm going to use is just use my main warehouse or the store number one warehouse as well, right? To move items to my main warehouse, okay? So to speak, in this type of example, you just need the transfer from code to then a, a move items to the transfer to code, okay? See, it's just like that. And we have set up the routes and the in-transit code that I will be used is the truck number one among these two. These three fields are mandatory. There is no other complication. What I'm just going to do is just add my Coca-Cola item for you to check some information. And I'm just going to move now chain or two pallets, so to speak, okay? So let's just select the unit of measure. And then the quantity to ship is just two, correct? Now, um, it's important as well, if you, if you want to control your, your inventory properly, please add the receipt date always. I always, always recommend to use the date so you can uh, follow up. We have different reports that help us to see the performance of the re receptions as well, either for vendors or for yourself, in this case, for the truck one driver. So nothing else. The transfer order has two steps. First, I'm gonna ship the items. In this moment, uh, the warehouse clerk would be, so to speak, taking the handheld, look for the pallets, scan them, and then load the truck. In order to ship, then I'm gonna click OK. In this very moment, my truck is loaded and the items are in transit, okay? So the quantity is just shipped, okay? Very good. So the quantity to receive is still two. What happened now with my item is that if I just take a look at it, I'm going to have items that are in transit as well, not only in my main warehouses. And as well, it's important just for us to understand the dates and the, the location. So in this case, I'm just going to open the related availability, right? The availability, look at this by event, by period, variant, and location. It's not a problem. Let's just verify. First, by location. Okay. Okay, very good. Now I have moved more items in different areas. First of all, in my main warehouse, the original 4,090. 4, then when I created the store number one, I currently have 400 items here only because previously we, we, we received 400, but then later I'm transferring 100 only that are currently in the, in the truck number one okay that will be important to 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 mention for us okay and we know that the truck number one is as well an item that is just currently in transit okay so that will be then the the, the idea is not is not yet in the actual warehouse where i want it but i need to know where the items are in transit that will be one of the processes that i will need all the time and then just checking the availability. Yeah, we, we can control when we purchase, when we transfer, and we know where the items are. But what happens if a customer comes with me and asks me for an item specifically in the warehouse where I don't have this specific item? What could I do? Okay, if I just take a look, let me just give you information. Now that we are managing many warehouses, I'm going to create a sales order. This will be our last exercise for today. And we are, we need to understand this concept of availability, okay? The concept of availability helps me information about the items that I have on hand, the items that are in transit, the date where I want it, and just to, for the warehouse clerk, look at this. The Atatum Corporation is selling from the store one, okay? And just from this exercise, I know that I have then here items is not a problem. Even if I input that, then I'm going to get immediately. Let me just add this customer and add my Coca-Cola. 
just to verify the information that I want to show. And I'm going to sell now 30, and look at this. In the, in the actual sales operation, I don't sell pallets. I sell, in my example, just the cokes or the pieces or maybe a six pack, okay? Smaller units, normally that happens in retail and wholesaling, okay? You purchase in large unit, larger unit of measures than the ones that you sell. And this is important. Whenever you do a sales order or a sales operation, and as well in the POS, you can get the available inventory, okay? What it is, this is real-time information. This current warehouse in the beginning of the day had 400 items. But as I continue selling, in this case, 30 units, now the availability was deducted to be 370 only. This is the actual number that my salespeople wants to see. They don't want to see just the physical inventory. That's for the warehouse manager. But in the sales process, while I have different locations, my availability will be different in every location. So you need to know where your items are. In this case, in the store one, 370 units. Let's just verify. Yes. Okay, this is good. I have now 330 for this specific date. Okay, so this is really handy because the salesperson now understand in the multiple locations world that we need to follow now the projected available balance, okay? So you can select to any given specific date what if you're gonna get enough projected available balance, okay? And look at this, 400 schedule received, that's fine. Gross requirement is somebody selling 30 units, which is us. Uh, but if somebody else is selling at the same time, the same item, I'm gonna get more demand or gross requirement. Don't forget that. And projected available balance. The actual unit that in real time, I currently have. Either for stores, or sales orders, this number is super important. But if you don't have the item here, just immediately you can start searching using the item availability by event window to check if you have items in other, uh, in other warehouses, okay? So if I just want to look at my information, you can recalculate this. Let me just sing in a little. Let me just change my warehouse. You can identify if you don't have if you, if you don't have items here. You can maybe take a look at another warehouse. Let's just verify the WMS or the West Warehouse. Okay, I send WMS. Okay, in the WMS warehouse, I don't have apparently availability. If I just take a look, let me just. Uh, Refresh my window for a second. You're gonna need to refresh to recalculate the availability because in Business Central, uh, you are actually uh, moving items often, right? So the idea is that we want to get the, the real time number, the real time. So that would be good for me. Okay, in the WMS as well, I have Coca-Cola's, but it's another number. It's, so the idea is that you can continue verifying information or just go directly to the item, right? To see where you have items. But in this case, what I'm selling, if I don't have the items here, okay, let's say I'm going to select now the North Detroit warehouse. And uh, or another one, the East Warehouse, let's verify. Okay, the East Warehouse, okay, doesn't have availability. That's a problem for me, okay? That's a very, a quite common problem that I need to, gonna, gonna get rid in order to, to solve it, right? Regarding all these multiple locations that I have, I need to find where items are, you know where to find our report. And for us as well, it's very important that when you don't have an item, two things can happen here. We can set up substitutions, which I'm not going to cover, but Business Central allows us to, to provide to our customer, okay, if, you, if I don't have the Coca-Cola you want, well, maybe another item will be 
will be good for you just in case, okay? So uh, that will be then just to mention, check it here. Look at substitution field, okay? You can tell to your customer uh, two things, two things of solving this type of issue, okay? Where we have this type of issues. We just need to check where our inventory is located and two things. Either work with substitutions. If you don't have the Coca Cola 400 milliliters, you can set up your actual items to work with another Coca Cola substitution, 500 milliliters in this case. Or if your customer wants that item as well, what I recommend you to do is just start working with a new function that we call the drop shipping functionality. Just to finish this, your sales order only require to just click here in the drop shipping field, please include it. Now in Business Central, just to mention that for those of you who come from NAB, you can personalize as well your columns, all right? It's more or less the same or other ERP, but now you can as well configure your, your entire document, not only the columns that you see here, all right? But please include the column that is called drop shipment, okay? Actually as well, NAB Business Central users. So if I just click here in this check mark, now in behind the scene, we have a very basic replenishing process. Let me just give you this uh, final view that we call then the requisition worksheet. Okay. So somebody in your salesperson, I, especially when you need to control different types of items in different types of warehouses, and when that comes with the time, we can as well work with a, an automated replenishing process. But uh, I'm not going to speci spe specifically work with that, okay? But the thing is that when I work with, uh, with sales orders that are urgent, okay, I could verify in one single window Let's say that multiple users are working now with these different warehouses. All of them have different needs and you as a manager need to move items between different locations, okay? So uh, the, 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 the replenishing process works fine, but if you don't have it implemented, please use the drop shipment field because here, if one person, uh, maybe the, the inventory manager can click on the requisition worksheet and click on drop shipment, get sales orders, and immediately you're gonna verify all the information that currently has their requirements for you and input immediately in one single page that we use to replenish all our, uh, our warehouses or, or network of warehouses and look at this. Somebody request a new, this is a new request, to act in the East Warehouse to get 30 units immediately, right? I just open my uh, replenishing uh, window and this immediately can be used with one single click. Give me the sales order that, that are urgent that we call drop shipping sales orders coming from different warehouses all over the place. And immediately there is going to be an order to purchase or to transfer, it's up to you. It's up to you because this is still open in Business Central to leave it for you for your type of cost. Sometimes it's a, a better to purchase or cheaper, but sometimes, of course, might be better just to transfer, okay? It's not a problem. And we can just uh, use the selection to create a transfer order for us. So just to finalize, when we work and we set up multiple warehouse use your intrinsic codes. Don't forget that your items, you have different reports that you can see where they are and to attend, to begin with the attention of the origin orders where you don't have inventory. We mark your sales order to be drop shipment and they will be moving immediately to be then available as a priority for us in the requisition worksheet. Either if you use it for a replenishing automated process, which is more advanced, or just to begin with the a functions to work with multiple warehouses, I strongly recommend to start using this function, right? 
The other ones are would, would be do physical counts or maybe have a different design of a warehouse, but that will be for a specific warehouse in more advanced webinar. For now, I'm just going to stop here the webinar. I'm just going to, uh, to leave it there. We are creating locations mainly today and moving items from one place to another, knowing the basics. And in our next webinar, I'm going to follow up with a second <laughs> explanation because this is not enough. Uh, some of you might tell me, yes, Noem, that's fine. Uh, but anyway, I, I would need to have other other a, a configuration some of you are, might tell me i need as well in one warehouse I, I manage my items in this way with pallets but in other warehouses i only use boxes and in other warehouses i as well have different costs i want to cost differently my items okay how am i going to do it when i have more than one warehouse because i'm planning to open a new warehouse or, or whatever we need to know how to manage specifically our inventory in the different warehouses that will be the base for if you want to then continue learning this process so you can go later and implement the real replenishing process so we are learning the basics the replenishing works either if it's manually or automated exactly the same but you need to know then the first a uh, configurations the following one will be then how to work within a multiple locations network with multiple items and how to treat them properly and once you know that then you're going to be later able to replenish your items properly okay so that will be all for today thank you very much for your time and see you Next week, if you have a, a specific doubt, please as well let me know so I can just go deeper into any requisition or issue that you have with your inventory. Otherwise, we'll be seeing each other next week.